working with that form of the thermal wind equation can be tricky because you got to know what you're going to do with temperature. Uh, if you could say the co temperature was constant in your layer, you'd have no real problem. Uh, if you wanted to say that you had like an average temperature or a mean temperature for the layer between P0 and P1, well, you could call that, uh, you could then substitute that in and you'd have a fairly straightforward way of working with this. But finding T, at, that average T for the layer uh, is a mess. Um, on the other hand, thickness isn't really a problem at all. Thickness is easy to work with. Um, you know, like if you have weather balloon launches, you just find the height at which you went through one pressure level and you find the height you went through at the other pressure level and that distance between them is just the thickness, the uh, geopotential one minus geopotential naught. So that's pretty straightforward. So, I mean, we can do some rearranging and find out that that therm thermal wind UT and VT is just equal to the height, the gradient rather of the thickness, right? That's the, the that phi naught and phi one, the distance between them is the thickness of those layers. In that is then the derivative of the thickness in the y direction and the derivative of the thickness in the x direction. That seems pretty straightforward. We should be able to learn more about this from maps of thickness.